What's going on everybody? So today for you guys, I'm going to be giving my review of Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. I've been seeing people online asking, uh, is this package good? Is this package worth it? So I'm going to be touching on whether I think it's good and whether I think it's worth it. And first and foremost, before I get into this, uh, I may or may not touch on some minor spoilers. So basically by that, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to give a brief summary of what the games are about. So I don't really know if that's even spoiler worthy, but yeah. So up first, I'm going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts HD Dream Drop Distance. So this is a remaster of Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance, which was a game that came out on the 3DS in 2012. So basically, what did I like about the game? Uh, it ran at 60 frames per second, so it gives us an idea of what 1.5 and 2.5 are going to feel like. So with the 60 FPS, along with it being on the PS4 rather than the 3DS, it feels like an entirely new game. It's so much more enjoyable. And I always thought that this game in particular was held back by being on the 3DS because it was such a good game in terms of the story. The combat was really fun. So the 60 FPS and it being on the PS4 definitely gives it a brand new feel and it's so much more enjoyable than it being on the 3DS. And also there are chronicles throughout which are little like journal entries that you can get to read up on past events. So like Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, Birth by Sleep, Recoded, Chain of Memories, all those games you can just read summaries on. So in case you missed those games, you can still understand what's going on when certain cutscenes come up. So what didn't I like about Kingdom Hearts HD Dream Drop Distance? Um, nothing really. Um, I loved it. It was great. Like I said, I've always loved this game, and I'm glad that it's finally on the PS4 and it's given a chance to be a quote-unquote real Kingdom Hearts game. But if I had to pick out anything that I did not like, it was what they did with the reality ships. So basically what reality ships are. Um, on the 3DS, you would touch uh, the touchscreen, and you'd perform different acts in combat or in the field to progress through the map. And um, but rather than touching on the PS4 where you don't have a touch screen, uh, you had to press circle and triangle to trigger them. And it's just kind of annoying because I don't know what else they could have done with it. Now, you know, if I'm thinking about it, I don't know what else they could have done to incorporate reality shifts because you can't just take it out because it's a really big part of Dream Drop Distance. So, um, yeah, I don't know, because you have to hit triangle to do certain commands, and sometimes I would do a command instead of a reality shift, and I'd mess up, and I'd die. So, that was kind of annoying. And also, something that they didn't fix was dropping in boss battles. Um, I thought that they fixed it. Uh, I guess they just slowed it down, because I definitely noticed that. Basically, the big problem with Dream Drop Distance was you'd be in the middle of a boss fight, and you're about to beat it, and you're like, oh my god, yeah, finally. Like, something that you've been stuck on for a while, and then all of a sudden you drop. And what happens is when you're done with the other character story and you go back to that boss battle with the character that you were before, the health is back to normal and you have to do it all over again. So they didn't fix that. Uh, if, like I said, they, they slowed down the timer so it's a little more avoidable. But at the same time, there's no reason why you should be able to drop in a boss battle. Um, but other than that, I mean, I give Kingdom Hearts HD Dream Drop Distance a 9 out of 10. Alright, so up next we've got Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage, which I feel in the package it definitely earned and has the spotlight of 2.8, because basically what this game is, is your Aqua, and it's basically just her journey through the Realm of Darkness. It's basically like a quote-unquote sequel from Birth by Sleep. And the reason why this was so hyped up is not because Birth by Sleep was a fantastic game, but because this is the first Kingdom Hearts game uh, running on the Unreal Engine 4. And this is the new generation of Kingdom Hearts. This is the quote-unquote demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 in terms of the battle style, the visuals, and all that stuff. So I think it goes without saying that one of the best parts about this were the graphics. The graphics were simply outstanding. And it's a really good feel for what Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to look like and feel like. And honestly, even if it looks just as good as this, I will be happy. Uh, I bet it will be better, which is, I can't even think about how good it's going to look because this already looks fantastic. So I love the new battle system. And by that, I basically mean I love that you could move and use magic. I have been waiting 15 years for them to allow you to move while using magic. I was so happy when I found out that you could do this. You won't be just running and hitting an enemy and then stopping mid-combo to fire a ball of fire. You can actually move and combo and then hit them with magic while moving, which is great. So even on standard, um, I have to say this game was challenging. So I love that the AI isn't stupid. The AI is actually kind of smart. Um, I haven't tried critical or proud mode, but I saw videos online of people doing proud and critical mode. And, <laughs> wow, that looks difficult. <laughs> So, also something that I really loved, the story was fantastic. 
it runs parallel to the events of After Birth by Sleep up until the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. And yeah, so there's a secret ending at the end that leads right up to Kingdom Hearts 3. I will not tell you what it's about, but when I say it leads up to Kingdom Hearts 3, I mean it literally leads up to Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, that secret ending, if that's not in Kingdom Hearts 3 at all, like at the beginning, I would be shocked because it is that closely correlated to Kingdom Hearts 3. And also something else that I really like, there's a lot of post-game content. The objectives throughout 0.2, um, you unlock customizable stuff for Aquish. You can give her like arm guards, um, different like skirt patterns, like um, wings in the back of her, uh, different headsets. I love the fact that there were objectives because it gave you something to do once you were done with the game. So here are the things that I did not like about 0.2. It was way too short. Uh, I think it goes without saying that it was way, way too short. But then again, I don't know what else I expected because they've said hundreds of times in interviews that this is going to be a mini episode. So yeah, I understand it, but I enjoyed this game so much that when it was over, I'm like, I just want to keep playing this. I just want to keep going. I want there to be more. Yeah, all in all, um, for what it was, it was fantastic. It was great. I really enjoyed it. This is my favorite part of 2.8 as it probably is for everybody else. Something else that I did not like was it played a little bit more like Birth by Sleep in my opinion, excluding the command deck because it has the same menu as Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2. When Aqua's attacking, it still feels kind of slow and floaty to me, which I don't know if that's just how Aqua attacks and that's just her battle style. If it is, that's fine. It feels better than it she did in Birth by Sleep because Birth by Sleep, I think that was I think we can all agree that in Birth by Sleep, she just, her Ventus and Terra were just floaty and it was annoying and it was slow, but it definitely feels a lot better in this game, but I still did get that sluggish, floaty feel whenever I was in combat with Aqua. But like I said before, it's, I think it's better. It's definitely better. It feels more like Kingdom Hearts 2, but it still does have that Birth by Sleep-esque battle feel. And something else that kind of bothered me, it's not a big thing, but this is just me personally. This game looks amazing. It looks great. The graphics are great. The scenery is great. Everything about this game visually is great. But there are there are flashbacks to Birth by Sleep in the old engine. And I understand why they did that, because, well, why would they remake cutscenes that already happened? It's just annoying because this game looks so beautiful. So when it flashes back to stuff that was years ago when Kingdom Hearts was still running on the old engine it kind of just leaves a sour taste in your mouth I guess you're just like oh wow like this game looks beautiful but then I see a cutscene where it looks 150% worse not saying it looked bad but you know compared to this it doesn't look great but that definitely doesn't ruin the impact that this game had on me so yeah I give 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep a Fragmentary Passage an 8.5 out of 10. So last but not least, we have Kingdom Hearts Key back cover. So like 1.5 and 2.5, we have a cinematic part of the collection. In 1.5, we had 358 over two days, which was just the cutscenes from 358 over two days. And then in 2.5, we had the cutscenes for Coded. But in 2.8, we actually have a movie. These aren't just cutscenes from the key mobile app games. This is actually a movie. So I was really excited for this to be the first quote unquote Kingdom Hearts movie. So this was something that I was really looking forward to. I was really excited. So basically what this is about, it's about the, the story of the foretellers from the, like I said, the mobile games of Key and Unchained Key. So yeah, it's told from the foretellers perspective rather than your character's perspective. So it's kind of like the behind the scenes of the app game, which is great. Um, it's really cool. It was really interesting and I was really excited for this. So basically what I liked about this, like I said, it was very entertaining and it just looked amazing. The visuals were so good in this game and I was so I was just blown away with how good everything looked and I really love how we finally got the personalities of the foretellers down like I actually now I like certain foretellers and I dislike certain foretellers so it was really great to actually get an understanding of who the foretellers are what their roles were and all that stuff so this was very very interesting for me and it was very entertaining and I had a blast watching it so Kingdom Hearts key back cover in my opinion, it was the weaker. I'm not going to say it was the weakest. None of 2.8 was weak for me. This was just if I had to say the thing that I was least blown away by. It was probably this, which is kind of annoying because I was really excited for Keyback Cover. I think my hype ruined it for me. But yeah, what I didn't like about uh, Kingdom Hearts Keyback Cover was it did not answer a lot of questions. 
I had a ton of questions before playing Keyback Cover, and nothing really got answered. Like, yeah, some cer- certain things that I was thinking about, there was some light shed on it, so I'm like, oh, I kind of get it, but I still don't get it. But yeah, at the end of this, I had five times more questions than I had before watching this. So I don't know if that's even a good or a bad thing, because you can theorize, you can speculate. That's always a lot of fun. Yeah, it just, I don't know. It, ugh. it was great. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to put a damper on it, but uh, I just want to know more, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like I said, it wasn't what I expected. Um, I'm not going to say it was boring, but there wasn't a lot of action in it. I'll be completely honest. I thought we were going to see the Keyblade War. And I thought we were going to see a lot of action. There's maybe like two or three actual cutscenes where there's some action. Other than that, it's mostly just conversing between the foretellers and... Like I said, you kind of learn about them, and that's really cool. That's awesome. It was very entertaining. But it wasn't it wasn't as exciting and thrilling and adrenaline pumping as I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I think that my hype kind of ruined this for me. But um, I think that goes without saying that you, it's definitely great. It was awesome. I loved it. But like I said, it kind of just left me wondering, which I, I can't even tell if it's good or bad. It hasn't really sunk in yet. But yeah, I give Kingdom Hearts Keyback cover an 8 out of 10. So all in all... Is Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue worth it? It's definitely worth it. I definitely think it's worth it. If you're a huge Kingdom Hearts fan like me, then you're going to love this. It will reignite that hype for Kingdom Hearts 3, and you're just going to want it even more now. Like, seriously, like I, I thought that I wanted it before, but now I am I am super, super impatient, and I need that game to come out now because this, this package tees you up so perfectly for Kingdom Hearts 3, and, I don't know, I'm just really excited. But going off of, like, whether or not I think it's worth it, like I said, I think it should... It, it's it's really for those people that are caught up with the series. If you're not caught up with the series, then this will still be entertaining, but you're not going to be able to absorb everything fully unless you know everything that's going on. So, if you haven't played all the other games, or if you haven't played 1.5 and 2.5, just to make it easier then I don't know if you're going to enjoy this as much. Um, I would recommend waiting until March, playing 1.5 and 2.5, and then playing 2.8, just so you can get the best experience out of it. So like when something happens, you're going to understand what it means, or you know all that stuff. Or if something's brought up in a conversation, you're going to understand, like, oh, I get that, oh, I get that. There's like that aha aspect to it, you know what I mean? So, um... Yeah, basically that's my review. Um, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue is definitely worth it. It's a great, great, great way to tee yourself up for Kingdom Hearts 3. But yeah, if, you are, if you're not cut up with the series, I highly recommend playing like 1.5 and 2.5 just to play all the games and get get yourself ready and get like brush up on your Kingdom Hearts knowledge. And then you'll definitely be able to enjoy it a little bit more. I hope this review helps encourage you to buy this package because it's definitely worth it, as I said. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let me know if you agree with some of the things that I said, disagree with some of the things I said, because I really want to know. So yeah, just let me know, guys. So until next time, I'll catch you all later.